Hi, my name's Sam Brenton, and today I'm going to talk to you about the concept of standing with science and how we as students have an important role to play in science policy. Now my background in this is that I helped found and lead an organization called Stand With Science, which connects graduate students and other students from across the world to advocate for federal science and research funding. I also, with that organization, help spawn the National Science Policy Group. The National Science Policy Group connects these graduate students and students to have conversations on their own campus about science policy, both in terms of advocacy, in terms of education, and in terms of solutions. But before I get to those organizations, I wanted to explain why it's important that we actually do science policy. Where do the students fit in? And where do I fit in? You see, I'm a nuclear engineer. And as a nuclear engineer, we get the same types of questions over and over and over again. Why are you creating nuclear waste? And why are you trying to destroy the world with nuclear weapons? And what about Fukushima? Those are great questions. And they're not simple answers. But science policy helps us by creating spaces to have the conversation where a challenge and a solution meet. You see, as a scientist, I can bring forward a possible technical solution. And if the policy and I work together, we can make the solution actually applicable. Policy also has the really important space of taking a national interest and moving it forward. So for example, when we fund science, we can help future solutions be possible. The hard conversations of nuclear engineering are what got me into science policy. Now you may have other great challenges that you are invested in. Those are why you should be involved in this conversation. And those are why the organizations that I'm going to talk about actually exist. When I got to MIT, I helped with an organization called the Science Policy Initiative, the MIT Science Policy Initiative. Now, SPI was a great group. I got to um, involve myself in a lot of conversations that I didn't understand that well. For example, when we started talking about GMOs, I'm not really great at GMOs. I'm more a uh, Neutronics kind of guy. But at least I could learn where my science would actually impact their policy. And I could learn how to have a conversation with people that didn't study the same things as I did. When I led a conversation on nuclear waste, they weren't all experts on nuclear waste, but we were able to discuss how biology was actually impacting nuclear waste. Where is the radiation science currently standing? And we also got to talk about what the different United States government policies related to different technologies actually impacted us. And that was a great, great space to, to learn about all these different types of science and all these different types of conversations. And that's where I started to figure out that the government was heavily involved in all of the science that I was doing. We started an organization called Stand With Science there at MIT SPI for one very specific reason. There was this thing called sequestration that was just off on the horizon and we didn't know if it was actually going to happen. But we had a conversation with some of our mentors and they said that students needed to have a role in this conversation. When sequestration was happening, it was supposed to be cutting funding across the board for science as well as non-science activities. The problem was is that when it started hitting science activities, this was going to limit the research funding coming in. When you're limiting research funding coming in, you are impacting our professors, but you're more impacting us as students because we're the ones who aren't going to be hired. We're the ones who aren't going to be able to come to school and study, and we're the ones who aren't going to be able to join the field. And that's why Stand With Science was born. Stand With Science had a very simple mission. We want you to stand with federal science and engineering research. A really simple topic. You wouldn't believe how complex it is to start an organization with something that simple. We started with a letter. One of my co-founders was really good at wordsmithing. So we wrote a letter to Congress and hoped that a few MIT students would help sign, us, sign it. After that letter was written, we decided that maybe we could try to share it with a few others. And so we made a video, a great video, which I hope you'll check out online, that started to share why science was important and why we as students cared 
about our science. We got to tell really small blurbs about what we were working on. We got to share why we cared. And my role in all of this started to come with the publicity and the social media. I like to be out there. I like to really get the message across. So my passion was taking this letter and this video and making sure everyone in the entire country could hear about it. And it worked really, really well. After 10,000 signatures, all natural, all coming from word of mouth, we had made an impact. When we visited Congress, they were impressed that students, especially graduate students, who were very busy trying to graduate with our thesis writing, had taken the time to work on a project like this. And it, it didn't work in stopping sequestration, but it did work in bringing our voices forward. And that was what mattered. The National Science Policy Group was formed after Stand With Science. And this is taking my passion for the role of students in science policy beyond just advocacy. You see, as a graduate student, I was lucky. I came to MIT and there was a science policy group for me to start studying with. But not every student is as lucky. For some of my fellow students back in Iowa, they didn't have a science policy group. And they started Facebooking me and emailing me and saying, Sam, how do we get one started on our campus? So we formed the National Science Policy Group, or the NSPG. And it helps brand new organiza organizations start their own little space. Let's have a lunch. Let's invite a professor. Let's write a letter. Let's do something to the editor. Let's do something to take science and policy, give them a little bit of a boost together, and see what happens. We also have professional groups and amazingly established groups like SPI who are able to connect with these small groups and help them grow and say, well, we had this challenge, so here's how you can fix it in the future. That's what NSPG is about. It's about taking the science policy and getting it across the country so that it's not only just the advocacy for our funding, but it's having the conversation. And that's where I'll leave you. You see, conversations with our congressional members are the most important way that we can have a role in science policy. This is an image of myself and my senator, Tom Harkin, from Iowa. Now, he remembers me well because of the red mohawk, but he also instantaneously knows that I'm probably going to start talking to him about something related to nuclear, because that's what my passion is. And when I visit him, as I tend to do very often, I make sure that we have a conversation, even if it's difficult, even if it's not comfortable, let's have a conversation on where the science is and where the policy hurdles are, and let's try to solve them together. Now, he's an expert at policy, and I'm an expert at nuclear engineering, so together we can make a really great solution. You have to keep the conversation going. You have to keep meeting with your congressional members Write them an email, meet with their staffers, do what you can when they come to visit you back in your home state or all the way over there in DC. Do something to make sure that your voice is heard. It's your turn. Do you see something misunderstood or misrepresented, i.e. nuclear engineering? You need to be courageous, do your studies, and make sure that you can represent that challenge and some possible solutions to those around you. You also might see a community in need of collaboration and representation. Just create that system of collaboration. Connect those who have the experiences and those who don't, like the National Science Policy Group, so that everyone gets to stand up and gets to walk forward together. What about the making an impact on the importance of scientists and engineers and how we're involved in the processes of policy? That's simple. You do a conversation. Whether it's with your mother explaining what your thesis is, or whether it's with your teacher thanking them for the education they gave you and giving them a little boost by maybe visiting their classroom and telling them about the great science that you're working on, or if it's with your congressional member and telling them that this is something that's important to you and to their constituents. By doing, by being courageous, by starting a system of collaboration, and by giving yourself a chance to have a conversation with those around you, you'll be able to have a great role in science policy, and I believe that you will make a great impact. Thank you for your time, and I really hope you have a great day.